And uh, we're very happy to have in the studio Richard Wenning, who's the executive director of the organization, uh, as well as a uh, uh, director uh, by the name of Angelica Durrell, who's founder of another nonprofit based in Norwalk uh, that will be joining some of the conversation with Richard. She's uh, in charge of uh, intake. Uh, Rich, uh, good to have you on the show, and uh, thanks for coming by in person, you know. It, yeah, see, thanks. To, great to be back. Well, I think you were on, uh, I don't know, a couple months ago, but I just saw you at the uh, the Dr. John concert this past uh, Saturday night, and, and you, it was a fantastic concert. And you, you, your organization was one of the sponsors uh, behind this uh, Fairfield Theater Company production. So uh, maybe before we uh, – I know, obviously, people are not going to necessarily recall – the conversation we had a few months ago. Talk a little bit about uh, spreadmusicnow.org uh, and uh, your involvement and kind of the mission, because you've been awfully busy. You've been doing a lot of things with a lot of schools and a lot of organizations. It's a very exciting and relatively new nonprofit. So, Richard, maybe you can just uh, tell our listeners a bit about the organization. Oh, great, Steve, um, and, and thanks so much for having us on. Uh, sure. This, this great community resource here. Uh, so I, I also direct a, a family foundation in Connecticut called Bee Foundation, and uh, we're, we're, we try to help bring about dramatically improved student outcomes for kids uh, in Connecticut and create vital communities. And, uh, you know, part of our goal you know, is to help kids be creative, be smart, be engaged. And to do that, we uh, set up a fund at Fairfield County's Community Foundation. You noted that their giving day is on the 5th. Um, and, and we created a fund there called Spread Music Now um, and spreadmusicnow.org. And through that, we invest in children's music education to make sure that income is not a barrier. You know, this state has such a big achievement gap and opportunities for kids, you know, really based on income. And we, we try to disrupt that. We want to make sure that kids have access to great art and music education in school, out of school. And uh, that's really what we do. And thanks to Fairfield County's Community Foundation, 99 cents on the dollar donated to our fund, which we invest in as well, and I do personally, goes directly to organizations uh, that we support. And these organizations in Connecticut, um, and we have Angie Durrell here, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about her in just in a second, but groups like the Keys Program, Angie's Organization, Intake Music, Backcountry Jazz, Music Haven, Project Music, Litchfield Jazz, L- Little Kids Rock, Hartford Performs, Neighborhood Studios, you've got Frank Dorico coming up, Westport Art Center, Fairfield Theater Company, all these organizations um, support more than 15,000 children that mm-hmm. otherwise would not have access to outstanding music and art education in this state. And that's what we're really about. And, uh, you know, Today, or really March 1st, uh, after we saw the Dr. John show together, uh, you know, we tried to get the word out. It's Music in Our Schools Month this That's month, right. Steve. I forgot, that's right. I forgot yeah. to mention that. That was another reason to, to have you guys on uh, this this month, besides the uh, Music Mash. But it is music in schools, and, and that's really your sweet spot. Yeah, right? that's right. And, uh, you know, opportunities like this to talk about it and to highlight these great organizations serving kids throughout this state is what we're about. And, and so we do a lot of social media, you know, my my ask to all your listeners to help us, you know, go to our Facebook page, um, like us, check out our content on music and music education and art education, where we highlight partners like WPKN, Fairfield Theater Company, and all these youth-serving organizations. They're just doing an amazing job of mm-hmm. developing kids, using the arts as a means to help propel their success in life and their college and career readiness. You know, it's really a, it's really a privilege to get to do what I do. Uh, and it's a, you know it's a real privilege uh, to sure. uh, um, work with organizations like uh, like Angie. Uh, so in in some respects, it's uh, it's really like almost like an umbrella organization uh, to to as a as a central source of potential funding, additional funding for other nonprofits. Is that uh, is that part of the equation? Exactly. You know, we we try to get the word out nationally about this work um, to direct more resources to Connecticut. Uh, we you know encourage folks to you know pay attention to all these great events coming up through March, April, and May. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, on March 15th, the Keys program's got a chamber music concert. Uh, Neighborhood Studios has their gale. I'm sure Frank's going to be talking about that. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, March uh, 
21st is uh, Angie Durrell's organization with Intake, and we'll talk more about that during this, this segment. Uh, and then we're gearing you know, up to work with all these different organizations. We're going to be doing a joint fundraiser for them later in May. And we just want to grow the pie of resources available right. to help kids in this state through these great organizations. That's great. No, it's great work. Uh, locally, uh, when, I, when I say locally to Bridgeport, uh, you've been doing a lot of work with uh, public schools, right? And do you want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the different activities that have gone on with, with um, you know, here in Bridgeport? Oh, sure. You know, it's uh, we always try to form a partnership with a you know a school system like Bridgeport Public Schools or Hartford Public Schools, and work with some great nonprofit organizations that serve kids here. Uh, and, uh, you know, in Bridgeport alone, uh, we've got Backcountry Jazz serving, you know, on the jazz side, the Keys program with the classical music, and we're really happy that uh, Little Kids Rock is just mm-hmm. moving into Bridgeport as well. Uh, the Lego Foundation came through for some funding with them. Nice. We, we've Congratulations. Brought, yeah. We've brought Little Kids Rock into Hartford. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's really about expanding opportunities mm-hmm. so right. that whatever art form and musical form kids are interested in, there's that opportunity there. Uh, it shouldn't be the case that, uh, you know, just because you may not have that much money, that you don't get to engage in the arts, which are so vibrant for building communities, building family support, Mm. and uh, academic performance as well for kids. Right. And, you know, you mentioned uh, back country jazz. Uh, We we both also saw uh, Benny Wallace, who is um, uh, is that his organization? Specifically, or is that is he artistic director? Uh, yeah, uh, Backcountry Jazz. Uh, uh, Benny Wallace and his wife Jeanette run that. They provide an outstanding jazz camp in the summer uh, right. for Bridgeport kids. And of course, we got to see Benny. He's just a you know oh, that globally was renowned jazz incredible. Sax you know, we were at uh, down at uh, Fat Cat uh, Pie in Norwalk, and and they uh, it was a fantastic band. And, and Benny's been great. He's been up. Uh, he was just up here with. Uh, uh, Rick Patron on the jazz show just about a month ago, and so we, behind the scenes, I think you know you and I have been working on trying to get uh, him with some of his students on one of the Sunday brunch concerts, and and it looks like he's ready to go oh, on the last Sunday of this month. So again, that's part of the community outreach of WPKN and the partnering with some of these nonprofits to to have Benny Wallace with some of his students come on under the the banner of Spread Music Now. Dot org so it, it all it all kind of fits together and it's all about networking and and trying to pull resources and you know be as efficient as we can so uh, rich you had mentioned uh, that an, another organization that you recently made contact with was intake so maybe this is a good time to uh, uh, introduce uh, your guest and and uh, hear a little bit about her organization. Yeah, absolutely, Steve. Thanks. Yeah, I'm really, really proud to have Angie Durrell here with us today. Um, We've gotten acquainted over the past month or so as we become, you know, became aware of her organization, Intake Music. Um, It's just, what just struck me was, you know, this this great young leader in our community um, focused on on cross-cultural development of musical instruments, instruments, you know, bringing native instruments to Western classical music um, to help with youth development uh, and uh, um, and working closely with families as well. And uh, Angie's event coming up on March 21st is her big gala. And I'm just going to turn it over to Angie to talk about Intake Music, what they do, talk about the, this upcoming gala. And, uh, you know, we're just so pleased to be able to support them. Awesome. So, yeah. Well, welcome, Angie, to uh, WPKN. You. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me, and it's just so wonderful to share the studio with with you and uh, with with Richard. Intake organization. Uh, the name stands for Instrumentally Native, taken on the classics. So. We have our Native Instrument Academy, which is our flagship program in Stanford, where we teach um, about 60 students to play the charango from South America. And we also combine that with Western classical music instrumentation like the violin and the viola and a bilingual choir as well. And essentially the mission of Intake is to combine these cultures and making the arts and classical music and our Native instruments relevant, accessible, and inclusive. And that is um, somewhat of a personal story, I I would say, that um, myself as an immigrant violinist from Ecuador faced when I was coming into the Norwalk Public Schools and that um, identity and cultural identity specifically was very important. And that's why uh, we want to preserve this cultural identity and pass it on to our youth and also pass it on through our parents and families and greater community. 
Excellent. And talk a bit about the uh, the gala. What is um, who who is expected to attend, and what is the uh, what makes up the gala in terms of the uh, concerts and the presentations? Yeah. So our uh, Norwalk concert gala it's coming up on March twenty first. It's the fourth annual concert co presented by the mayor of Norwalk and the city of Norwalk. Our symphonic partners are the Norwalk Youth Symphony, and this year they will be performing for the very first time in their sixty year anniversary with the Mariachi Academy of Connecticut. So I invite imagine uh, I invite everyone to imagine a, a, a symphonic orchestra with native instrumentation from Mexico mm. as well as with native instrumentation from South America and Peru. Um, all in one stage, about 150 artists in one stage performing classical music like Bach, like Mozart, and also Mexican uh, classical music like Arturo Marquez, uh, Danzón Number no. 2, as well as traditional music that was made for the mariachi, but it's going to be also played with a symphony orchestra. Mm. Sounds fascinating. It, it will sounds, be very It unique. sounds like you know, like a WPKN playlist when, <laughs> when I hear all the uh, the countries and the, the uh, instruments mentioned. Uh, where can our listeners get some more information about your gala? On and what is it? The twenty first, March twenty first, Saturday at seven p.m. And to check it out, they can visit our website intakemusic.org. dot org. And they can also follow us through social media. We're so grateful that we have the major support as our underwriter um, sponsor, the SpreadMusicNow.org and the B Foundation. So they can also go to their website Mm -hmm. where there will be links to our um, upcoming cultural crossover concert. Right. And the the musical instruction that you do, is it it supplemental to the existing music uh, that goes on in the schools or is it uh, after school programs or both? So we have an... uh, it's, it's an after school setting mm-hmm. and we like to think that it's very supplemental and in essence the cultural connection um, it's the gap that we are build, bringing into the table since um, we have these great bilingual instructors that are able to engage with our students, with our families and with our entire community and that they serve as mentors and role models to our students so the kinds of education or access that unfortunately the system them, the school system is not able to provide at them at this time. We're able to give to them with our after-school program, and it is our uh, long-term goal to be able to partner with other uh, public school sectors in the state and also nationally, so that our cross-cultural curriculum can be made accessible to to all of these students while they are in school. Mm. And then, uh, obviously, you're sourcing a lot of special instruments from South America and Latin America, and and that's. Uh, is something that you you hold on to that inventory, or do you? Uh, is it something you distribute to the children as well? Yeah, that's a great question. Unfor- yeah, we bring our charangos. It's a native Indian instrument. We bring them from Bolivia, which is really the home of this um, of this instrument. Um, it is very difficult to get them all the way from Bolivia. Some of them have broken. Mm. We just had some accidents this past weekend at a concert. But uh, yes, that is part of our native instrument collection. Our students are obviously they they play on these instruments. It is their voice, their way of expressing their culture, their way of expressing their musical education that they're obtaining through us. But we've also traveled to these countries to preserve and to meet the Mm. instrument and to bring back this repertoire. Nice. Well, it sounds like a very uh, interesting organization, and I can see why uh, Spread Music Now found uh, Intake, and it sounds like a nice uh, nice partnership. Uh, Richard, is there anything else you you wanted to add at this point? Or uh, uh, I'd say the same to you, Angie. Other, otherwise, you know, we're really happy that you could come into the studio, and we really thank you for the support of uh, our music mash and just uh, our partnership in general as we go forward in time. We've we have a lot of different community events, so. Yeah, Steve, thanks thanks so much, you know, and for the listeners out there, it takes all of us that love music to make sure we encourage music to happen in our communities, whether it's through, you know, nonprofit and radio like this, uh, whether it's like organizations like Angie's. Um, for some reason, we've cut back on the arts, and we've got to recognize that the arts are a 
critical means to student and individual and community success in this country. And it's just so important that we all get behind it at whatever level we can and just sharing mm-hmm. the word, participating in social media, donating whatever can be donated. We've, we've got to make differences for kids' lives uh, in this state. Well, well said, and it's certainly appropriate since this is uh, March is the Music in Schools Month. So I wanted to uh, thank Richard Wenning, Executive Director of SpreadMusicNow.org, and uh, Angie Durrell, Founder and Artistic Director of Intake. And we're going to go out with a song uh, that maybe you could set it up, Angie. Yes, uh, we are delighted to present to our listeners uh, soloist virtuoso in the accordion Paco Godoy with the Norak Youth Symphony for what was our second annual gala concert performing El Cumbanchero. Good. Thanks again. Excellent. All right, we'll see you down the road.